Hello, it's Friday the 22nd of August 2008 and the market's closed for the week. you got to be impressed with today's action. Yesterday I said I was skeptical about the market. It appeared as though, uh, you know, with the weak volume, with it stuck below that declining 50-day moving average, I was saying, thinking that uh, the odds were greater of a breakdown. But again, this is why you have to suspend what you believe and trade only what you observe. Because if you'd stuck with a bearish posture today, then obviously this $1.70 one gain in the spider or 1.3 percent would have done some pretty good damage to you. We got back above that 128 level, and now this is looking like more of a failed move lower than anything. So uh, this 128 level becomes important once again as a uh, area of support near 128 to 128 and a half, and that's actually where that five-day moving, 50-day rather moving average, which is beginning maybe to, to to flatten out a little bit. We've got a 10 above the 20, the 20 maybe coming up through that 50. All all in all, the moving average is moving back and forth like this represent indecision so I continue to remain cautious in here however we're starting to look a lot like we did back in April where we had that rally above the 50-day moving average a shakeout below it and then the market really had a, a, a nice rally for the next six weeks after that and we'll see that same pattern here shortly uh, in the queues as well so overall I think we've got to look at this as a uh, constructive action this week we held above the uh, 126 level got back Back above 128, and now the uh, the the range that we're in is looking more like this 126 up to about uh, 131 or so. When we look at it on an hourly time frame. Let's uh, just change that so we can see a little bit better. Here's this trend line that uh, was broken earlier in the week that gave us reason for concern. A trend line break doesn't always mean a reversal. It means that the uh, the trend that was intact is uh, you know beginning to tire. And if it doesn't mean lower highs and lower lows, then more of a uh, correction through time. We did see, though, that we had these lower highs and then this lower low. But the market was able to hold on above that 126 and a half, 126.30. I guess is what I uh, was saying about 126.30 or so and today the market got back up above that five day moving average and took out that 128 what I'd said yesterday is the only reason I would really start to think that uh, this market can hold on the gains is if it can get above and hold above that 128 and a half well obviously we did that the market rallied up to uh, this level here we still have a you know we still need to take out this level for a higher high basically and uh, that trend line got away from me there but uh, basically it would be right around this you know 130 and a half area uh, that would then perhaps pave the way for higher prices here uh, the you know the weekly action uh, let's take a look in there uh, we, we we know we had that shake out below there um, we've got it up to this level in here and maybe we're gonna head you know we could potentially make a case that we're going to head up towards uh, the mid uh, with the, the low 130s 132 133 let's just uh, keep a shorter term focused and remain flexible as I like to say if you're if you expect nothing and you're open to open-minded to anything that's happening you're never truly going to be surprised in the market uh, let's take a look at that Fibonacci and just see where we are from the uh, high back in uh, in May to the uh, recent low why is it not grabbing on there we go to the uh, low back in June uh, or I'm sorry July here we are you know at the 38 percent retracement level it'd be easy to see it rallying up towards 132 maybe even up towards that 135 level for a 61.8 percent retracement uh, the you know we've we've got to remain open-minded to anything the, the volatility has been large in here as George Soros says vol volatility uh, peaks at turning points and diminishes with trends so perhaps we're setting the stage for a turn higher later in, into the year and um, you know it's supposedly a bullish time of year with uh, elections and that sort of thing year-end rally sell them in May and go away you come back after uh, Labor Day and, and then buy them again is is the way you know the uh, folklore says uh, obviously price is the only thing that pays but price is starting to give us more reason for being incur uh, encouraged here we had the opportunity the sellers that is had the opportunity to take control of this 
market and push it down in a fearful way down towards these lows here. But the buyers came back in and saved it. And now, uh, you, again, you've got to be encouraged with that action, particularly from the financials. The financials, uh, I had posted on the blog earlier today that, uh, you know, did get above that one th or $20.30 level. And it was looking like maybe the seller, the, uh, the a, a further squeeze uh, could potentially develop in this group. I said as long as it holds this 2030 level, which it came down and tested, so this resistance actually did become support intraday, and then we had buying continued throughout the uh, throughout the session. So that's that's good to see that we broke this downtrend line. And actually, the reason that these financials supposedly were strong because it was a takeover target in Lehman Brothers, and Lehman was actually one of the worst performers. It gapped right up here. The high of the day was right at the open, and then it kind of chopped around and closed very weak here at the end of the day. So again, be careful with these rumors and, and chasing them, but right now the financials are improving. They This group had the opportunity to get hit real hard with this 1975 level. Had that broken, then it was we probably, I th in my mind, was was heading down towards these lows. It's, we saved that, though. It broke this little downtrend line back above the five-day moving average, back above this little support that was acting as resistance. So now, again, $20.30 is important. If that fails to break, you would then look for, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if it does break down below that level, then you would look for $19.75 to be tested. And if $19.75 fails, then we're back to further downside. On the daily time frame again we've got uh, these moving averages crossing back and forth uh, so that leaves us more of a mixed picture but the direction of them is all still lower so it's not all clear to just go out and buy these financials I think that they're really remain best suited only for day traders uh, in, in that group uh, because they're, there's gonna, they're going to continue to be very uh, heavily influenced by any news or rumor that you hear. Uh, the uh, Russell 2000 we saw backed off the uh, highs that we'd seen back in mid-May. And that level, again, on the weekly time frame is very important. The good news is it didn't pull back real far. And that on the daily time frame, it came right down to that important level at $72 a share and then recovered today. We've got a rising 10, 20, and that 50-day moving average looks like it's beginning to rise as well. So here's a market that's much uh, improved. And uh, I think that if we, if we could... You know, remain within that 72 to 75, 76 level for you know even a month or so would be great because that could pave the way potentially for a break that could hold and then maybe push this market up towards these levels. That's longer term. That's that's too hard to really uh, you know take very seriously at this time frame. But same thing in here. This this trend line broke. The market made a lower low in here. That gave us reason for for big time concern. We had a five day moving average that was declining. Lower highs and lower lows and now we're right back up to this level here at about 73 and a half so when we look at a 10 minute time frame you can see that it's not quite as bullish as the S&P 500 but what we do see in here at this prior support level and where we're finding resistance right now at 73 let's just call it 7375 or so but what we see setting up in here is a pretty obvious inverted head and shoulders pattern and these are typically bullish if you know they break the uh, downtrend line it makes a higher low right in here we take the height of this pattern which is from the neckline directly down to the top of the head there's the height we take it and add it to the breakout point and that would suggest a move up towards about 75 and a half ideally I'd like to see it pull back a little bit early next week down closer towards that 73 maybe test that five-day moving average see that hold as support and then clear the way to push higher again but this is this is given us reason for concern uh, for for encouragement rather what would concern me would be a breakdown below that 72 bucks a share a break below $72 a share, I would become very defensive on this market. Oil yesterday, I said that you've got to be very careful chasing these counter trend rallies, that the primary trend is still lower. We've got a declining 10, 20, and 50 day moving average. The market came up to uh, where it should have found resistance. 
uh, at that, uh, you know, just about that $98 level here when I'm, let me get my trend tool back. Uh, but this is, you know, this is where it should have found resistance. It's not always an exact number. Uh, and then it came down today and failed to hold right here at this 95 level. So uh, people trying to uh, pick the bottom in oil uh, haven't been able to do it yet. And, and if you look at uh, natural gas, again, has has really kind of been leading oil lower this group is just continues to just bury people in here um, I don't think that was a closing low let's take a look today close at 36 30, 67 this close here was 63 cents so four cents off the closing low uh, no sign of a bottom here in the UNG which is the uh, ETF uh, exchange traded fund for natural gas so continue you know the, the the sellers are in control of these energies and that remains encouraging unless you're uh, you know from Canada uh, the, the central uh, fund of Canada some some people say hey Brian you know people here in Canada want oil prices you know it helps our market because they're heavily tied to natural resources but uh, you know obviously gold as well GLD gold continues to be in a downtrend had a nice rally Rally this week, but uh, where did it rally to? It rallied up to this prior level of support in here. Found some selling, and you know, gold looks broken to me. Uh, the Nasdaq 100 was up 62 cents today, and as I said, this this is looking very similar to the way the market looked actually back uh, in here, which was uh, in 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 late or mid mid April. We had the market rally above that declining 50-day moving average, pull back down to it, and find support near the 20 well here we are you know finding support at the 20 yesterday that 50-day moving average is flattening out this could be setting up another similar type of move it's it's starting to look a lot better here on this daily time frame on the weekly time frame if we break this downtrend line and get us out of this triangle that might be the bigger picture uh, move that, that leads to a reversal again I know I've been sounding bearish and I and I generally overall am but we're starting to see uh, a little bit of light at the end of this tunnel here and we're starting to see that you know the only thing that matters is price and price is giving us reason to be a little bit encouraged here this level was the important level and shall remain the important uh, level of support near 46 46 10 for the queues we had seen the lower highs and lower lows now we're back up above that what we need to see in here is kind of the same thing We've got this inverted head and shoulders pattern. I'd like to see a little bit further pullback, see this five-day moving average act as support, and then be a buyer on Monday, maybe as it crosses 47.40 or something, if we get a pullback down towards this level, a higher low, set a stop below those lows, and then that would give us the potential for upside based on the height of this pattern up towards about uh, looks like uh, 4875 or so and looking at the hourly time frame that would put us to a new high here so that would give us a higher high on the daily time frame 4875 would and if we got above 4875 and I know this is a lot of ifs but we got to be forward looking and 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 you know be able to interpret the new data as it comes in that will get us up to 4875 right there let me peel that away and you know then we're within spitting distance of these highs back in here so things are starting to be a little bit more encouraging here and um, no live video this week uh, but I but I'll probably post some ideas to the blog over the weekend